Greg Martin joins us in. And, oh, you got the day off because you got the man flu. Uh, crook enough to take a day off work, but uh, not crook enough to be in bed all day. How does that sound? Sunning myself, mate. No, yeah. no COVID. No, no, the no there's no such thing. Some of those. No, no bloody cares well, about COVID anymore. I Come on. About it. Yeah. Well, I went to get some cold and flu. Yeah, the old cold and flu tablets. I mm. thought I'll get some of them. And the girl said, oh, you, you, you better get a COVID test as she stepped back one metre. And I went, oh, is that still a thing? She went, certainly is. And unfortunately, I had to buy some tests. So, yeah, do you yeah. ram a jam it right up the nose until it hits your brain? <laughs> no, mate. I just gave it a little tickle. And, mm. uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. So how does it, So when you're sick, does Mrs. Marto wait on you hand and foot or does she go, Greg, there's stuff, you got stuff to do, you got stuff to do? Uh, bit of both. She slept uh, in, the, uh, in the spare bed last night because she said, I don't want whatever you've got. Right. And uh, then she came in this morning at about six o'clock and went, why aren't you at work? I said, remember I'm crook? So yeah, she went, yeah, all you do for a job is speak. So I went, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so no. <laughs> God, I remember this when I was married, mate. Tina yeah. Turner died overnight oh. at 83. And I just went back and I watched that cracking 1989. What you get is what you see. That was the one before Simply the Best. This was the one for the Winfield Cup. Greg, it is yeah. still as good as it ever was, mate. It is just fun erupting from the screen. But you know what? We wouldn't be allowed to do that these days. 24 years later, this is what the world has now become, thanks to you, the woke ass brigade, is that it had tits, it had bums, it had man pecs, it had guys in little shorts, it had cheerleaders, it was sweaty, it was sexy. There's just no way you'd be allowed that anymore. You'd be exploiting this and you'd be, you know, misogynizing that. And it's just, you look at it and you go, it was just, it was sponsored by a bloody tobacco company. <laughs> It was a simpler time and it was magnificent. I reckon it was the turning point for rugby league. I think so. The girls went, wow, I like a bit of that stuff. Um, but she was sensational. And then do you remember they got her out maybe that year, the year after, to the grand final? She strutted around and we're all going, God, she's sexy. And then someone taps you on the shoulder and goes, she's in a 60s, you know that. Oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry. sorry. I shouldn't, uh, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't think that looks good. That She was incredible. I, I, I started reading this morning about her background. I didn't realise what a tough time she had. I yeah. just yeah, you I want to watch the movie? Up. Yeah, the movie, mate, is up. yeah, is um, oh, right uh, yeah, like I mean, yeah, Ike Turner beat her, and he was just a, such an a hole towards her and everything. And then at the oh. age of forty, she wanted to resurrect her career, and this kind of kick started it. But I agree with you, mate. I think that that is the reason the NRL well, it's not the reason, but it kick started why it is so popular now. It was the first time that somebody put a rock and roll song with sport, and guess what? It worked. It sure did, I, and I stole it for all other sports around the world. It was, whoever thought of that, I think it was, his name was Ken Arthurs and the boss of the uh, NRL, oh, the New South Wales Rugby League it was there. And it meant that it wasn't just rock apes going to watch rugby league. Their girlfriends started going, so, and then single girls started going. It turned it turned everything on their head, so they owe her. I'm sure they paid her plenty, but they owe her, her whatever they can give. It's, it was incredible. Yeah, mate. The rugby might have to look into that. Do you reckon it'd get cancelled now if you did that? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it'd be cancelled. It'd be cancelled, mate. I mean, you're allowed to objectify men. No, but this is uh, the whole point. It was that's what it did, and it was kind of like about look, go and listen, watch the video, people, and then and then and then ask yourself why we wouldn't be allowed to do that anymore. Boxing in Melbourne last night, Joseph Parker fighting your man. It was Joseph versus Django, uh, firing a op. Hello, Uh, he's apparently he's a Brisbane tradie, so you might have crossed paths. He was incredible. He was a scaffolder, as most good Kiwi lads are here in Brisbane. That's how they start. Um, but he, did you read about him? His last few fights, so he's had 14 fights. I think he only had one loss. He used to go to work. His last fight, the fight where he became Australian heavyweight champion, this bloke that got, oh, Parker knocked him, you know, got him going in the, what, 50 seconds into the fight. Anyway, forget that. But he used to do a full eight-hour day scaffolding and then have, go home, have a shower, and then he won the Australian Championship that night. That is complete old school. That's the days when, when sports people used to do a full day's work or half a day's work and then go and play. So, yeah, he was hoping he could beat Parker, but Parker had Tyson Fury. It was a funny old night, mate. Did you see the crowd? It was every gangster and wannabe gangster in Australia was there. That must be where they do their networking. <laughs> well, they do their networking there, and also because you know, that, that is the one place they can have conversations that can't be bugged, you see. 
So yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It can just yeah, unless, of course, you know, the, the the you know the fed, the feds are going around putting a mic under every single table. Um, was it was it a, was it big news at all? I mean, we've I mean, it's hard to get excited about it over here because Joseph is not going to challenge for the heavyweight title. He's making a bit more cash and all of that. He's a fantastic bloke, Joseph. But it's hard to take these kind of journeyman fights that seriously. Oh yeah, they're just they're going around making money. He's not going to fight anyone proper. You're right. He's just in it for the cash. But that's what they're. Isn't that what they're all in for? Yeah, yeah. There's a few of them at the top going, oh, I want the belt, I want this or that. The rest of them are just in it to make money and bash people up. It didn't get any publicity here. I wasn't aware of it until yesterday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. And then, as always, I thought, oh, I should should I pay the $60? No, because what happens? You pay the $60 and they say it starts at 6 and the main fight's on at 10.30. And uh, I have to, I'll be in bed by then and I'll wait, have wasted my money. There's still plenty of people love watching people get bashed up. Don't forget that. Greg Martin, Triple M out of Brisbane. It's a man's show catering to a male audience. It rates its absolute knob of. Um, are the Reds going to make the playoffs, mate? You've got a couple of matches. Mm. You've got away the Highlanders. and Sorry, yeah, away the Highlanders. And this is Aaron Smith's last game. Bit of emotion around that. But, they, you know, they've had a bit of a rubbish oh, season. No. And then away the Fijian and Drua at the moment. You're five and seven, sitting seventh on the table, battling with the force, battling with the Highlanders. Are you going to make it? We're like the old French team. You don't know which one's going to turn up. Thorny's dropped seven people, um, so he's serious. He's got two games left, and he's going home to his homeland. Uh, so I reckon they'll be fired up. That Aaron Smith will, you know, he'll fire his team up. Yeah, mate, I couldn't tell you which Reds will turn up. Will it be the one from two weeks ago or one week ago? So don't know. But they, if they make this, they win this, they should be able to squeeze into the eight. Uh, despite what happens next week, getting it to Drew. So, got no idea, mate, what's going to happen with the Reds. From week to week, they are so inconsistent. I'm, I apologise for them. A couple more quick questions. We'll let you go because I can hear you dying in the background there. Um, the Barbars yeah. versus the World 15. Again, I've got little interest in this. I call, these, these kind of piss trips. Well, the only thing I care about is the fact that it's Shag against Eddie Jones, mate, again, mate. And the last time was 2019 in the semi final. Yeah, but yeah, right. Well, that's the headline, and that's what they'll be banking on. But really, what does it mean? Nothing. And I look at some of the teams. There's blokes there who haven't done anything for five years. So she's a uh, she's a superannuation game, I guess you call it. Did you ever play those festivals? Did you play Barbar's games? Yeah, played a couple of them over there, and uh, oh, they were fun because you were drunk the whole week. Yes. It was like the old style state of origin. You just got into camp. What do we do? Oh, we'll work out the calls, then we'll have a have a few beers, and the whole week was just uh, had the drink. Yeah, drunk, and, and then you turned up and no one wanted to tackle. Well, that's the best thing. There's no defence. So there's plenty of points, and it's fun for the fans, And but it means nothing. No. Yeah, they get paid well, and they get paid well, and they get paid pretty well. I think these days, it's, you get paid in English pounds, mate, we'd all like a bit of that, wouldn't we? Mm-mm. Well, that's what it, that is what it's all about. Did you have a look at the names in the team? Oh, I don't have like, It just doesn't there. interest me. I mean, honestly, I don't. I just, yeah. I, it's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just, well, there's forget. so much rugby and so much of it is dreary and dross and hard, hardly worth watching. And so when they tack on a game like this, finally, mate, next Wednesday, and we'll talk next Friday, Origin oh. State against State, mate against mate. Um, blokes are crate and the transsexuals are played. Is that how we do it these days? The what? No, what sorry, are you talking? Sorry, mate. I just, it used to be ladies at play, but you can't say that anymore because it's you're a sexist, misogynist oh. pig in New Zealand if you say that. No, it's still huge here. Well, we still hate New Zealand. Does everyone in New Zealand still hate everyone from Auckland? Everyone else in New Zealand hates everyone. Yeah, everyone Auckland. hates. And look, That's and right. they love it when we flood. They love it when there's traffic problems. They, they look, that kind of news, Stop. that kind of news delights the rest of New Zealand. I know, obviously, right. people are concerned about people's houses falling down hills, but most of the time they think if it's happening shit in Auckland, I'm loving it. Oh well, people in Sydney and New South Wales think their poo doesn't stink, and the rest of Australia knows that it's going on in Adelaide. The whole of Adelaide will be supporting Queensland. The whole of Australia supports Queensland, so because they go, oh, I like that attitude of the Queenslanders. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They're always angry. I love that stuff. So it uh, won't be a bashathon, but. We still get excited about it. I can't expect you guys to get too. No, I love it, mate. I don't know what it. it is. I mean, look. I mean, Every... I don't have the affiliation apart from my brother lived in New South Wales. I've told you that before. But I've been a cockroach the whole yeah. time. And I hate Queensland. I know. I know. We look like Neanderthals, but we're good at being Neanderthals, and uh, we'll take it every day of the week. It is on the front page, the back pages, middle pages. It's everywhere at the moment. It's not the game's not even in Brisbane.